Wow, thank you. And everybody, show some love to Reverend Mitchell. Come on, make it loud. Thank you, thank you. And uh, wow, that's wonderful to hear. The only thing I, I have to disagree is that my 70s feminist mother would smack me if I called anyone honey. <laughs> um, but thank you. And, and thanks, Reverend Mitchell, for breaking the seal um, on the size of this crowd. Because what we have right here is some very dedicated people who have shown up to support a community event. But I do know that there are a lot more people out there. There's a lot of us. There are so many of us who are afraid to walk out into the sunshine, who are afraid to stand up and be themselves and be proud of who they are, to be seen. Even in a place like Northampton, there are too many of us who are afraid. And I know you're watching and I know you're listening. So as Reverend Mitchell said, no, I'm standing with you. Anytime you're ready to go out, when you're ready to stand up and be seen and be counted and tell the world, yes, I am proud to be trans, Lorelei will be there with you. Now, thank you. I have a number of things to say, and uh, I've learned from hard experience in these sort of gatherings uh, that any time I ever have anything prepared, I end up having to throw it completely out the window. Uh, because I, I, I show up and, uh, well, the very first time I spoke in Northampton, I spoke at a, an anti-California Proposition 8 rally. And I came and I stood on these steps right here. I had just moved to Northampton from California and I had been uh, just a couple months previously at uh, a gala star-studded event in Beverly Hills celebrating the passage of same-sex marriage in California. And as soon as I moved out here, they started trying to pass California Proposition 8 to ban same-sex marriage. And I had some things to say about that. Okay. So, I came out here, and I said, can I please get up on your stage and speak? And I spent weeks and hours preparing this very meticulous speech. I studied the tradition of marriage. I studied the institution of marriage. I had intelligent and persuasive things to say about it. I, I had a whole section dedicated to how the, the idea of traditional marriage is bullpucky. Um, you know, for instance, you don't own your wife anymore. But then I got up on these steps and looked out at this crowd of Northamptonites and I said to myself, well, there's not a soul in this crowd I'm going to have to convince. <laughs> so I forgot everything I was going to say, dropped it all, and thank God I'm an improviser. And I stood here and I tried to give that crowd what it really needed, which was energy and drive and a reason to stand up and convince those people to go to those people in their communities who disagree with us, who fight us, and convince them that they're wrong. Because that's what I saw that our community needed. And what I'd like to tell you that we need is unity. L-G-B-T-Q-I-K-A and G-Q unity. And transgender solidarity. Now here in Northampton, we have a long and storied history uh, of, of the gay liberation movement. It, when I lived here in the early 90s, I remember People Magazine was here and put us on their cover as uh, Lesbianville, USA. We have the highest amount of lesbians of any city in the US, which is a wonderful thing, wonderful people. They've been great to me. Um, but it wasn't always so. Trans people have not always been accepted, and we are not necessarily always accepted now. We're often left as the little t in the LGBT. And that cannot be. 
We cannot be the little T. We have to be the big T. We have to be able to lead ourselves. And now I look out and I see so much squabbling and fighting and I want to bang people's heads together and I want to tell them, do you remember what you were taught in kindergarten? How you don't have to like the other kids to get along with them? Sometimes we have to act like adults. We have to remember to work with people we don't necessarily agree with or understand because we have something bigger to do. Now, a lot of people ask me, what does trans have to do with, with the, the like LG and B stuff? It's not a sexuality, and that's true. It's, you know, it, it's accepted trans community gospel that gender and sexuality are totally different things. And there are a lot of people who need to hear that and be made to understand that. But the crowd I'm talking to right now is, I think, a crowd that's already got that, understood it, wrote the book on it, got their master's degree in it. So, lots of people, I mean, I'm an advice columnist. It's supposed to be my job to give black and white answers, but I'm not any good at that because when I look at the world, I see a gray world. I see a world that consists of shades of gray. There are no black and white answers, and I'm sorry to break it to you folks. There are degrees of answers. We don't live in a world where gender and sexuality are in a vacuum. It's impossible to go through what you have to go through to be transgender, any version of transgender under the transgender umbrella and not intersect with all kinds of crazy aspects of sexuality and gender. I, for myself, as an example, because I, 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 I really, I can't talk about anyone else, but I can talk about my own experience. And my own experience is that I went from spending a lifetime pretending to be, for all intents and purposes, a heterosexual male. Now, I was theoretically bisexual, by which I mean I, you know, I, I, I could look at a man and say, yes, that is an attractive man with whom I would consider having sex. But generally speaking, that's not really how it rolled. I tended to date women. Then I got on hormones. I started HRT, and I entered a second puberty. And everything went haywire, and it went from sort of a theoretical sort of thing to, oh my lord, I would like to spend the evening with that gentleman right there. <laughs> but I was still in a long-term relationship with a woman, and I still like women. And then in the work I do, I meet all of these incredibly beautiful transgender and genderqueer people, and... And I had to just kind of throw it out the window. Now the reason I've given you that example is to say that as a trans woman, I've had to pass through, sort of de facto, being gay, being lesbian, being bisexual, being queer, being all of these things. Every part of the LGBTQAKANGQ I have had to go through. And, you know, segments of that I've enjoyed more than others. I bet. But folks, we need to stand together. That's why we belong with the LGBTQ, etc. rainbow. That's why we belong in the alphabet soup. But, as transgender people, as I said, we need to stand strong and we need to stand together. Now I see far too many of my trans brothers and sisters and others fighting each other and knocking each other down. I, I see so much bickering and infighting and, and people arguing about who belongs and who doesn't, who's trans enough. And it's ridiculous to me. We 
have so much fighting we have to do. Now this is Massachusetts. And this is a pretty liberal place here. Things are not good, but they're a lot better here than they are a lot of other places in this country and especially in the world. But even here, we only just got our basic civil rights as transgender people in the past year. In the past six months, did I get transgender, did I get civil rights? Did I get the basic right to employment and to housing? And even that's not complete. So we live in a state where same-sex marriage is already legal. Anyone can marry anyone else that they love. And yet, we had to wait for our basic civil rights. And we got there, we got some of them. But one of the reasons we're here today and one of the reasons it's important for us to keep coming together, to have events like this. Why do we have a trans pride in Northampton? It's a fine question. We got a bunch of civil rights. Why should we not stay home and watch Saturday morning cartoons? I know I'm a big fan of Top Cat. And I totally just dated myself. <laughs> but really, I'll tell you why. Because there's work to do. Because we have some transgender civil rights here in Massachusetts. Thank you. But there's a lot of people in this country who don't have any. And here in Massachusetts, there's still some fighting to do. Yeah. We have to win public accommodations. Can any of you believe that we still don't have public accommodations? No. Now I understand, politically speaking, why things went the way they did. If you ask anybody who's ever participated in the civil rights movement, they will tell you that nobody gets their rights overnight. It's just not how it works. You know? Ask a, ask a woman if she'd give up the vote to wait for equal pay. It's just not how it works in politics. So we got a bunch of civil rights. But I can still be kicked off of a bus, asked to leave a restaurant. I can be denied all sorts of services. I can be arrested for using the restroom. It's ridiculous, and it should not be. And the only way it will not be is if we, as a community, as transgender people first, and then as LGBTQ, A, I, K, A, and G, Q people, yes, come together and work together with trans people leading the fight, because we can't ask anyone to lead the fight for our own rights. We have to lead ourselves and bring our allies along. The only way we're going to get those rights is to come together to fight, to stand out, say, I'm proud to be trans. I will be counted. I am a human being and I deserve basic human rights. So my message to you out there and to the rest of you here, but you out there watching alone in your room, afraid to come out, if you're in a community where it's not safe, by all means, take care of yourself first. But if you are somewhere where it's going to be relatively safe, where you're not going to get beaten up for coming out, now I know it's not safe anywhere psychologically for us to come out. The abuse that we take just standing out in the street is horrible. But unless we start standing out and saying, I'm trans, people aren't gonna see us, we're not gonna get those rights. So I beg you, come out, be yourselves, do what it takes to make yourself happy, and then help us get the rights we deserve. Thank you, everyone, for coming today yeah. and for showing up. I love you all. Slime chip.